greenies. Rich, rich history. You are part of it, you know, and uh, the, the conversation today is building a coach's brain. Last night, I seen some, you know, guys that's been together since 93 and probably before then, and they were extremely, you know what I'm yeah. saying, like, together. You were around then. Explain that a little bit. When I came to Fort Myers, I'm a little older than those guys. Um, Coach Sam had been established for quite a while, and I think the thing that I guess made the program go was that there was so much continuity and consistency with the coaches because, uh, you know, his brother was a defensive coordinator and then he had two or three other guys that had been with him for a long time. And then, you know, it started to be a, a legacy thing. Like your brother played there, then you played there. And when Jamie and those guys came, um, my best friend is a guy by the name of Leon Young. He was a year behind me and um, his two nephews Randy and Clifford Young were in the class with um, Jamie and uh, Rod and Clifton Green. And all those guys, they grew up playing Pop Warner together and they hung out together. They just they had a real close bond. And, you know, the combination of good coaching, good, good continuity amongst the coaches and good continuity amongst the players and the coaches led to... I guess, in my opinion, would be the 92-93 Green Wave team is the best team in the history of Lee County. Um, well, I'm going to ask you this. How do they become the best team in Lee County and they ain't even make it to the dance? That's my – you know, I, I'm the number one supporter. But well, how do they become the number one team? St. Thomas Aquinas was smart enough to avoid the big class by about – and I'm not – joking when I say this, about three students. They they knew how to manipulate the attendance, the uh, the enrollment, and they always avoided the bigger class. And to be honest with you, St. Thomas just had way, way more players. My ninth grade year, uh, when I was on JV, we played St. Thomas for the last game of the year. We were undefeated. They were undefeated. And they came to us. And I remember we had about 30 players. And I remember they came through to warm up. And it's like they was running through the tunnel for about 15 minutes. <laughs> they had so many players. What did you notice that all coaches did to, you know what I'm saying, build their brand? From like, you know, from, from high school to college to the NFL. What did you notice about each and every last one of your head coaches that they did that you know, help them build a brand? Well, the weird thing about it is um, each coach, I think, has a different style of philosophy. Now, I'll say this. I started in high school. Coach Sam was just a no-nonsense old school coach, him and Coach Hoover. And both of those guys built their brand off of consistency and long-term winning and developing players, you know, because if you look at it, North Fort Myers and Fort Myers were the two – when I was growing up, they were the two, you know, stable programs because they had stable coaches. Right. And neither one of those had a lot of coaching turnover. So if you win, your brand becomes you, – you you develop a brand because you're a winner. Like take the guy – I'm glad you guys brought up Lakeland. The Castle guy that's at Lake, that, 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 that coaches Lakeland. Or George Smith, who was at St. Thomas Aquinas. They didn't do a lot of self-promotion. They let the product promote them. Now, when I got to Miami, Coach Johnson was a marketing major, or excuse me, a, a psychology major, but he understood marketing. And every year we had a slogan that he would put on the front of our workout shirts. Like my first year was press on because the year before they had lost to Penn State um, in that classic Fiesta Bowl game. And his message was, look, we lost. Let's keep it moving. We got to press on. We got to go through the tough stuff. So, and he, he, he was his attention to detail with the suits and his hair. Um, he, he was one of the first coaches that understood what you guys are talking about, putting himself out there. He was, he was made for TV with that. I mean, to this day, his hair hasn't moved. And, <laughs> You know, if you look at Nick, if you look at Nick's, if you look at Nick Saban, 
he's sort of like how Coach Sam and Coach Hoover were. He's just now getting into, um, you know, marketing himself. You see him on a couple of commercials. But the same thing with Bill Belichick. They just win. And the winning brands them. You know, because if you look at Belichick, he is the most – he's more blanded than white rice. I mean, <laughs> he doesn't do anything special. He doesn't say much. He just wins. Just win ball games. And I think – but then you – yeah, but then you get some coaches who um, are more into the marketing part of it, and they might actually do better as a marketer and a brander of themselves than they do as a winning coach. 